Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to an announcement video. Uh, those tend to be short, but this is going to be a longer video <laughs> because there are lots of books to talk about. Anyway, um, this is my announcement that in 2024, I will be co-host um, of Sandy's book club. Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot. She has a book club, a thousand and one book club, because she reads thousand and one uh, books from the list from those books you can buy you know thousand and one books that you have to read before you die she combined all those lists and she makes her way uh, you know sandy's channel and if not i will leave a link down below please uh, check her out and subscribe but she picks 10 books off of her list uh, every year that uh, she asks the book community to read with her so it's her book club, her thousand and one book club. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, she asked me whether in 2024, she, I would be interested in co-hosting. And of course I am. That's a fabulous idea. I don't have to do anything basically, but read books and make videos. So I can do that. There is a Discord uh, channel. I will leave a link to that down below. I'm not good at Discord. It's just too flashy and too many colors and it makes me nervous. Um, but Sandy will uh, be on Discord as well and you can talk about the books there if you want to. But basically, in order to join the book club, just have a look at the list of 10 books. Um, and if you want to read one with us in the month that we read it, you are a member of our book club. So please join. And what we did uh, is we combined, as you know, I have curated my own list of the thousand and one books by women that I want to read before I die, because I feel uh, those official lists are too heavily male. It's two thirds male, very white, not a lot of translated lit. So I made my own list. But there's overlap, of course. So we looked at both our lists, Sandy and I, the books that we uh, have still to read, and we came up with 10 uh, for this year. And there are many more, so we might go on for more years. <laughs> I don't know. But in, 2000, uh, in 2024, we have come up with 10 books. Um, the book club starts in February. You will have a link down below the list uh, of every month and the book for that month. Um, so you have plenty of time. It's now the 13th, I think, of December. So you have plenty of time to look at the list, see whether you want to join, uh, uh, try to get the book. And I still have the sniffles like last Sunday. Um, didn't really get very bad, but it didn't. It's not over. So, yeah, anyway, sorry. Um, so you have time to uh, get the book from the library or used or to buy it. Uh, and in February, we start. And we start with uh, the oldest book on the list. And that is this one, uh, Madame de Lafayette, the Princess de Clave, uh, translated. This one is a new translation by Terence Cave. Uh, but there is also a translation by Nancy Mitford, if you are interested. Uh, so, Madame de Lafayette was obviously a French, and now I'm starting to cry with all the sniffles, uh, uh, was a French um, woman of nobility, but also a writer, a femme de lettres. And this one, even though it was published uh, 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 anonymously in 16, what did I say, 16 something, uh, 1678, um, everybody knew that she was the author, and it's her yeah, most famous work. It's about a woman, the Princess de Cleve, who marries um, the Prince de Cleve, who is in love with her, and he's a nice guy, but she falls in love with somebody else. And I think that was scandalous in the 17th century. So this is the oldest and also, I think, the only translated work on our list. And we will read this in February. In March, we will read a modern classic uh, published in the 1920s, uh, 1928. Yes, The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. And this uh, is a modern classic of LGBTQ plus fiction literature. 
uh, it's about the lesbian love. Uh, the main character is Stephen, and uh, you might think it's a guy from the name, but it's a woman um, because her father wanted a boy, so she he called her Stephen. Yeah, parents um, falling in love with another woman and trying to find her way as a lesbian in a society where it was not, you know, uh, it was frowned upon to say the least. Um, this book is uh, considered uh, very explicit at the time, but from what I heard, I read it in German a long, long time ago. I mean, <laughs> in the 21st century, this would not be considered explicit uh, in terms of lesbian relationship, but it is definitely a modern classic. So that's the book for February. In March, uh, we will read a more recent book published in 1992, Hideous Kinky by Esther Freud. Um, and this is, um, uh, she was born in 1963 in London, um, and she was trained as an actress, um, and uh, in 1993 she was chosen by Granta as one of the best young uh, British novelists. Um, and this is a kind of semi-autobiographical novel about her travels with her mother as a young uh, child in Morocco. Um, so that's where now we are now in... April, yes, May. May, we will read another modern classic, uh, The Waves by Virginia Woolf. Uh, it published uh, in 1931. Um, for me, this is a reread. I wanted to reread this book for quite some time. And when I saw it was on the list, on Sandy's list, uh, I th thought this is a, a good opportunity for me to reread it. I really love the language of this book. It's about uh, um, a, a character. You have six children, Bernard, Susan, Rhoda, Neville, Jenny, and Louis, and they meet and they uh, go to sea. And it's this pure stream of consciousness kind of book. So it's hard for me to tell you what the, what this is about. Um, uh, it's widely regarded as one of her greatest and most original works. Um, but I, you, you already can see that I have a hard time telling you what the book is about because it's, for me, very difficult to, to really find a good way into the book other than the language that I thought was beautiful. So it's a good chance for me uh, to reread it. So that was May. In June, we read nonfiction, the only nonfiction uh, on the list. Um, and that book is Love's Work by Gillian Rose. Um, and the book was published in 1995. Um, this is a part memoir, part philosophical contemplation about life and death because when Gillian Rose wrote this um, she was dying of cancer. I have never read anything by this author so if you know the author well and things uh, and think that there are other books that you would really recommend no there is no recommendation in the back either um, anyway, but if you have works by Gillian Rose that you would like to recommend, let me know. But in um, June, we will read her short memoir, Love's Work. Uh, now, moving on to July, uh, and that is also the, mo the most recent published, recently published book on the list, 2013, and that is The Flamethrowers by Rachel Kushner. I have read one other book, or tried to read one other book by Rachel Kushner, The Mars Room, and it didn't work for me. I DNF'd it. Uh, but this is, I mean, iconic uh, cover, and it's uh, set in 1975, and we meet Reno, uh, that's her name because the place of her birth, has come to New York, intent on turning her fascination with motorcycles 
and speed into art. So it's a book about the 70s. Art might work better for me than the Mars Room. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see how how that one goes. And now the sniffles are back. Um, then in August, I have to take a short break and blow my nose. Sorry about that. <laughs> but I didn't want to blow my nose in your face. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we had July, the flamethrowers. In August, there will be no uh, book up book. Um, August is um, our summer break. Um, Sandy is on vacation always, uh, hiking a good portion of the month. And August for me is the 30 books in 30 day, a day's month, as you know, if you follow my channel, which I try to read uh, 30 books in 30 days. And I'm always happy when I don't have too many other obligations in that month. So August, we will take a break. We will resume in September uh, with the appropriate title, The Last September by Elizabeth Bowen, published in uh, 1920 and something, uh, 29. And this is the only Irish, didn't really help blowing the nose, but anyway, this is the only Irish uh, uh, author on the list. And I really want to have a, a, a book by Elizabeth Bowen on my list. I tried uh, something with a heart, the heat of the day or something, nothing to do with heart, the heat of the day, and I, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't handle the language, and I DNF'd it. So this is my second try, the last September, and I hope it will work better, because I think, for some reason, I'm absolutely convinced that Elizabeth Bowen is an author for me. So this book is set in the 1920s in Ireland, and uh, about a family, uh, the, the rich family, uh, but in decline. So it, it's the, 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 you know, the, not the roaring twenties, but more the twenties, uh, dance on the volcano kind of thing, as you can see, kind of dilapidated, uh, country wealth. So let's keep our fingers crossed that this that Elizabeth Bowen will work for me. Uh, we head into October and we chose a book that you can also read for Victober, the month long readathon in October, where we are encouraged to read Victorian literature. And our pick is Edith Somerville, The Real Charlotte. And this is a horrible edition by Warbler Classics, but yeah, I couldn't find anything else. The book was published in 1894, and it is about two very different uh, characters. Uh, we have Charlotte, a 40-ish flinty Irish spinster, um, and she takes in her orphan cousin, the beautiful 19-year-old Francie. And plot ensues from there. These two women couldn't be more uh, different. And of course, Charlotte wants to marry Francie to a local uh, squire or the son of a local squire. But things, doesn't, uh, things don't quite develop the way uh, Charlotte's, Charlotte wants. That's what I understood. So I'm curious. I've never read this author. Um, and thinking, uh, I have to look this up. Uh, and now, of course, it's I'm very slow with looking stuff up because, uh, yes, I said that Elizabeth Bowen is the only Irish author, but even though uh, she was in Somerville was born in Corfu or on Corfu, she is an Irish author. So, yes, uh, November. In November, we will read a book by an author that I also uh, haven't read, a relatively recent uh, a publication, 1986, as I just looked that up, because the book, <laughs> this is an old library copy that I managed to get that doesn't say anything, but it's Laurie Moore Anagrams. And the book is about Benna Carpenter, who is an art history professor um, and a uh, chain smoker, uh, giving 
aerobics classes uh, and she has a, a daughter, but she's very bitter and it's about her life. That's all I know. Uh, again, if you have read Lori Moore and if you want to recommend uh, books by her to me, please let me know because I'm very interested in this author and I have never read her. Okay, uh, enough with the sniffles, damn it. Well, there's only one more book to go. Uh, our December pick. Uh, and I'm crying in your face. So this book was published in 1922. Uh, here we go. The Life and Death of Harriet Freen by May Sinclair. It's a short little book in um, Sandy's overview. It has 80-something pages. This is a little bit longer, but the font is huge. So, <laughs> yes. Um, and this book is about Harriet is the Victorian embodiment of all virtues um, that are regarded essential for a woman, you know. Um, idolized, uh, uh, she's idolizing her parents uh, and she is the, the, the embodiment of the good woman. Or so it seems. We will learn more about Harriet Freen in this book by uh, May Sinclair. Did I say when it was published? I think so, in 1922. Uh, so it's actually a historical novel because it's set uh, in Victorian England. So um, those are the 10 books whoops, that we will read. Here we go. It doesn't I, I don't do that well. That's why I never do that, <laughs> holding up books. But those are the 10 books that we will read for uh, Sandy's 1001 Book Club that I will co-host in 2024. I hope you will join us. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments whether you are planning on joining. And I'll talk to you all soon in the next one, hopefully without the sniffles.